Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Zaha's Porcelain. Today I'm going to be discussing PCOS, otherwise known as polycystic ovary syndrome. PCOS is something that I have been wanting to discuss for a while now. I feel that women with PCOS aren't really acknowledged by the community. I don't feel like people are aware of PCOS and I feel like that needs to change because women that do have PCOS, it's serious, you have to make lifestyle changes, to deal with changes with their appearance, you have to deal with fertility issues, you have to deal with depression and your mental state of being as well. I feel like doctors aren't really that educated on it. I feel that people in general don't really know about PCOS and I'm here today to just clarify some things to get into the symptoms and the signs and the treatments. I myself, I am a woman with PCOS. I've had PCOS since I was 13 years old. In the beginning, I knew that there was something wrong with my body, but I kept going to the doctor and I couldn't find out what's wrong. My doctor would just switch me off on different birth controls. And I always had an irregular period. So that's when I first started to look at things a little bit suspiciously. And every time my doctor would switch me on a new birth control, she would basically say that your body needs to be able to adjust to the medication. So it's normal to have a regular period, but then it's going on months and months and years of trial and error and the same things going on. And it got to a point where I just didn't get my period. I didn't have my period for like a year. And I was like, you know, well, of course, I, mean, I wasn't pregnant, but I just didn't get my period. Like, not even spotting, nothing. And I was just like, something is definitely wrong if I'm not, I'm not getting my period. I just thought it was so weird, but every time I would go to the doctor, she would look at me like I'm crazy. She would look at me like I'm crazy and so just basically why are you here? You up in a regular period, that's it. And basically just brushed me off. Um, eventually I grew tired of it and I knew that there was something going on and I felt like my regular gynecologist um, wasn't putting in enough effort in order to solve my problem, in order to help me figure out what exactly was wrong. So I started Googling and researching and I came across an endocrinologist in the city who happened to be very nice. I had got an ultrasound done and it did in fact show that I have PCOS. For those of you that are unaware, PCOS has a lot of different symptoms, but the main symptom with PCOS is hormonal imbalance. Your hormones are imbalanced, that leads to a whole nother list of problems. When your hormones are imbalanced, it can show on the physical aspect, which would be your skin. You can be breaking out. You can also have dry or brittle hair. You can feel weak, fatigue. You can have weight loss issues, which is another big thing. Some of the other common symptoms with PCOS can be depression, insomnia. A lot of women with PCOS have what they refer to as an apple shape. Women with PCOS also may be a little bit more hairy than the average woman, like you might have a little more hair on your legs or on your face. Women with PCOS also may struggle with infertility issues. And as I stated, the regular periods or no periods is also a very big sign for women with PCOS. Basically, throughout the years, I've learned to manage and deal with my PCOS. PCOS is an autoimmune disease that can be controlled with proper diet and lifestyle changes, but you can find yourself going through a lot of difficulties and a lot of problems with your body if you choose to neglect the proper changes that you need to make in your diet and as well as your lifestyle. But my PCOS, the main symptom that I have is 
chronic fatigue, lack of energy, and insomnia. Like right now, it's two o'clock in the morning, and I'm here blogging because I can't sleep this early for me, two o'clock. So that's just what I deal with. And I, I have uh, my supplements. I'm gonna share with you guys. It is a lot, but um, we'll go through everything. I'm going to be honest, I take a lot of vitamins, I'm not kidding, like, I have two of these, like, full with vitamins, and I'm not going to lie, I don't take all of them every day because it's just so much vitamins, but it does help, um, it helps give me a little extra boost, but the number one supplement that I'm going to recommend for you guys is Serapeptides. This is it here. This basically helps to remove the dead tissue in your body. There have been women that have reversed their PCOS by taking serapeptides. You have to take it on an empty stomach. The next supplement that I'm going to recommend is berberine. Basically helps to manage insulin levels. Women with PCOS uh, often have problems with our glucose levels. And women with PCOS also have a hard time breaking down starch and processing fluid. If you're a woman with PCOS that has chronic fatigue and is constantly feeling tired like me, you might want to purchase some vitamin D3. You also may be interested in using B12 pills or receiving B12 shots. For my personal experience, the B12 shots are way stronger and more immediate as opposed to the vitamin. It's like, it made me feel alive. Of course, it becomes pricey if you're getting it consistently, but if you have money, then you can do it, or every once in a while, it makes you feel awesome. Another great energy supplement for women with PCOS is Girana Root Powder. It is a beige powder. You can add it in your smoothies or in yogurt and it gives you a quick energy boost and it's natural another supplement that i take is omega 3 6 and 9 the pill looks like also list some of the supplements that i take in the description box in case anybody's interested in purchasing the l glutamine i also take melatonin 5 milligram for when i have trouble sleeping melatonin is a safe supplement to take if you're having trouble sleeping it's a safe sleep aid the pineal gland produces melatonin your body basically has an internal clock that lets you know when it's day and night time and when that clock is activated in the nighttime as opposed to the daytime your body is not releasing enough melatonin it's lacking melatonin so your body can't really tell the difference between day and night time which is why you're up we're up i'm up so if you have trouble sleeping, you should definitely try melatonin. Diet-wise, it's very important for women with PCOS to monitor our sugar intake and our gluten intake. And if possible, you remove all artificial sugars from your diet. Remove all gluten from your diet. Also, must incorporate exercise into your daily lifestyle. If you're a woman with PCOS, your doctor may prescribe you certain medications in order to start regulating your hormones. Your doctor might prescribe you something such as metformin, Victoza, Spironolactone, or Trilinia. I have tried all of these prescriptions. Metformin, uh, I have an allergic reaction to metformin. Spironolactone basically is given in order to help with the physical appearance of your skin if you have PCOS and you're experiencing a lot of breakouts on your skin it'll help to control the physical portion the acne it's also given to to people by dermatologists too that do different kind of skincare issues so this is also used to help filler levels you take Victoza over a six month period, it can have some side effects.
so when my endocrinologist first set me up with the medications to help regulate my hormones she did give me Victoza she started me off at the lowest dose which was 0.5 I haven't taken it and I don't take Victoza anymore it made me extremely nauseous the 0.5 and I had to get to the highest level which I believe was a 1.8 you can just correct me if I'm wrong but um, basically I couldn't eat anything I always felt nauseous and I was so nauseous that it would make me feel dizzy I would feel really dizzy when I'm at work or when I'm traveling around and it was just really frustrating for me eventually my body got used to it but there were still days where I felt really nauseous there were days where I didn't want to come out of bed and um, I ended up losing a lot of weight with the Victoza but it was because I wasn't eating like I lost weight so fast like in a matter of months I lost I lost so much weight that uh, my family started looking at me weird like because I didn't I didn't tell them that I had PCOS asking me questions like about what's going on like what I'm doing and yeah it's like I was like it must be really noticeable if everybody else is concerned like they were concerned and you know because they didn't know what was going on and it was just an immediate change. I was happy that I was able to lose a lot of weight with Victoza but I also received some of the bad side effects from Victoza. With prolonged use with Victoza it, kept, it causes a lot of gastrointestinal problems. So in the long run I lost weight really fast immediately but I also had to get surgery. The surgery my doctor told me that it would be okay to get back on Victoza again but when I tried to get back on Victoza, my body rejected it and it would give me like this horrible stomach pain and uh, this really bad back pain. So I chose to discontinue the use of Victoza and I no longer use it. I wanted to share that story with you guys for anybody that's considering taking Victoza. I'm just one person. Not everybody may have the same experience as I did with Victoza. I'm just sharing my story. There's people that have taken Victoza and it has done wonders and their body just switches fine, but everybody is different. Now it's like I'm at the point where I'm a little bit more open uh, discussing PCOS. Like in the beginning, I did feel uncomfortable um, talking about it. I still feel a little bit uncomfortable when it comes to um, discussing that with my family. I'm going to have another kid. I already have one kid, but I think about in the future, um, I want to have kids. And I know that with PCOS, women have fertility issues. I did give birth, however, um, I had a lot of complications when I gave birth to my daughter. And I lost so much blood. and. I couldn't walk three day, for three days after I gave birth to my daughter and I was so frustrated because when you're a new mom you know you just want to be active with your kid and I wanted to do things I wanted to do things by myself and I just couldn't I just had to be in the bed like in the hospital room um, you guys know if you've been in the hospital before the bed and the bathroom are, are pretty close and distance wise walking and every time I would walk up and take a couple steps to the bathroom I would just feel so dizzy it was just like it was it was a little bit of a struggle for me and I just think about that when I think about me having you know a kid in the future in order to conceive you just have to go through the process if you are currently taking medication that are that's helping you balance your hormones so ladies that are interested in having a kid or are having fertility issues you should consult your endocrinologist make sure that you're receiving the proper supplements um, 
other supplements that you guys may be interested in taking is maca root, cacao powder, and spirulina. They all can help balance your hormones and boost your energy level. I would also like to recommend lymphatic drainage massages for women with PCOS. From around the time where I discovered I had PCOS, I was visiting a nutritionist on a daily basis and I would also receive lymphatic drainage massages. I went from having no period for a year to then spotting after my second massage, I spotted and I was really surprised. Um, the massages are a little bit uncomfortable and rough uh your body will be a little bit bruised up but lymphatic drainage massages is good because it helps to break down all the dead tissue and i was really surprised like that out of all things that helped me to start spotting so that was an improvement from having no period to spot if you do choose to get a lymphatic drainage massage i recommend that you drink a lot of fluids afterwards to flush out all the toxins from your system. Women with PCOS, as I stated before, may also have dry, brittle hair. Dry and brittle hair is a sign that you're lacking certain vitamins. Balancing your hormones is key to solving a lot of the issues that you do with the PCOS. The line cause of most disease is due to mucus buildup. Mucus buildup causes inflammation and causes diseases and causes problems. Gluten and artificial sugar are the main causes of mucus buildup and dairy as well. Cheese, milk, all that stuff is going to cause mucus buildup. With PCOS, uh, we, we basically have to monitor our intake on these things and uh, it becomes easier, you know. I notice myself when I have too much starch and I have too much gluten, it makes me feel really tired. Even if it's just like a bowl of pasta, it just makes me so sleepy. So it's best to stay away from gluten. And also your body's gonna process gluten differently with PCOS. And as an effect, we tend to gain weight faster. And when you gain the weight after a certain point, it becomes very hard to lose with PCOS. That's why we're encouraged to exercise and we're encouraged to eat healthy and stay away from all these bad things. Because once you do it consistently, it becomes easier. But um, it's generally really hard to lose weight when you have PCOS. So gluten and artificial sugar will cause rapid weight gain. I would like to take the time out to encourage everybody that watches this video to submit a letter um, to the PCOS Advocacy Day, which is going to be happening March 6th and 7th in Capitol Hill. Okay, all you have to do is submit a letter to why you support the cause and your name. This way we can help raise awareness in the PCOS community. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can contact me through my blog. You guys can drop a comment, message me. If you guys have any questions about PCOS or any more questions on how I manage my PCOS, feel free to contact me. I'll see you guys next time.